He's comedian thespian David Spade, who joins us now. David, how are you, bud? Danny, is that you? Yeah. I'm leaving rehearsal to talk to you, and I'm getting in trouble as we speak. Okay. First of all, what kind of trouble would you get from uh, Sandler? <laughs> My 90-picture deal might get altered. <laughs> Has Sandler ever yelled at you? <laughs> Truly gotten mad at you? Ah, uh, such a good question. Yes. Um, it, sometimes on Grown Ups or those movies when there's a bunch of us idiots and we're rehearsing and it's Salma Hayek and Chris Rock and we're trying to wrangle for a scene and he has to sort of direct us and get us all together. That all we do is talk and screw off. And uh, he has to go, guys, come on, let's go, let's go. Spade, why do you know your lines? What are you doing all night? <laughs> so... I do get caught in that crossfire sometimes. And when Rock forgets his lines, he yells at him. Or, or, or you, the best is when you have a scene of like seven people and you, you have a line every two pages. So you just space out. And then they get to you and he goes, Spade. And I go, oh, oh, what, what does my guy say? It's like, Jesus, how easy is this job? I'm like, uh, believe me, I know I hear it from Twitter. What is this? Uh, what's famous about your uh, reality prank show? Oh my God! I thought you knew. Um, no, that's uh, no. We 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 wanted to do a show. By the way, I'm the only guy that plugs the show the day after it airs. That's <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> we tried we tried to get you yesterday. In fairness to you, uh, yesterday was a four page scene. There's no way I was getting uh, uh, whatever. I don't want to give the whole movie away. Um, the uh, the famous was me and these guys talking about these reality shows and trying to think of a funny angle. And what we came up with was there's all these shows where people have that want to be on a reality show. They want to be famous and they don't even care what reality show. They just go get me on TV. So they have to do paperwork. They have to do a psych evaluation. They have to do all this stuff. So all these people did all that. And then they're just waiting in the batter's box to get pulled it up to the bigs. And so when the show is already taken, they're not on any, these guys say, we have all these great people that just want to be on something, so let's just make up shows. So we have, like, Blind, Blind Day, you know what I mean? Like, it sounds <laughs> like a show, and they don't know it's not real. And then we have What's, what's in My Mouth, which is a cooking show where we make them eat uh, the weirdest things. And we have one, I think, called uh, Made for You, and it's girls... They think they're marrying the guy, but it's to be their maid. <laughs> Did anybody so, get real upset with uh, when they find out they're being pranked? Well, the one last night was, uh, there was one, I was in one of the bits called, uh, it was a uh, talent face-off, which is like an X factor. So they come out and play guitar or they sing, but we have it do it against another contestant. So it seems real, but it's so awkward because we had the first guy who's a uh, folk singer going up against it a karate expert who was just like basically <laughs> breaking bricks. And so you can't focus and it's so distracting. And then the guy goes, is he going to do this the whole time? And I'm like, it's fat. It's face off. Do you get it? 30 seconds left. And so they go, Oh, and so one guy was doing it, a bass guitar against a guy with an electric guitar. And, uh, and you couldn't hear him that well. And he was getting more and more. And he was the nicest guy. And then at the end he goes, what do you know about, singing anyway or music you're in comedy and i go hey whoa 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 i'm the judge and he goes he goes you ruined saturday live with eddie murphy jokes and then he stormed off <laughs> i go what i'm not on trial here and then uh we told him it was a joke and he wouldn't come back because he was so embarrassed that that eddie murphy thing doesn't go away david are you surprised it still has legs where people are mad at you because you were joking about eddie murphy Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so dumb. I, I, I wrote a book that's coming out, and uh, I have to do a chapter about that because the book people are like, please tell the story. And I go, it's so dumb. And they go, well, your whole book's dumb. I go, oh, wait, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, it, it's funny because I saw him at the 40th anniversary. And we cool, we cool. Is that what he I said? Gave, I gave him the old head nod across the room. It means a lot in this day and age. I know how to talk to rappers. I know how to talk to people. Uh, but Eddie was very cool, very quiet. So but does he? he kind of gave, were you joking? Were you joking what you said about Eddie Murphy? When I did it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was joking, but there was some legitimacy to the, the fact that he had two bombs in a row. 
And uh, by the way, there's nothing worse than the term bomb. Maybe, <laughs> maybe flop. Hey, I heard your movie flop. It's like, oh Jesus. Which segues way, into Joe, uh, Joe Dirt Two, Beautiful no, Loser. No, it doesn't. No, no, no. no I'm not saying it's, it's it's not a flop. Yeah, there but, you go. But what questions were left unanswered by Joe Dirt, the original, the Joe Dirt Two, Beautiful Loser answers? Twelve years later, I was like, we've got a question. <laughs> one person had one question, so we had to go answer it. Uh, other than why did we make it, uh, the big questions were, what Joe Dirt up to now? So Joe Dirt, by the way, Dan, yeah. I know you don't care, it was on Crackle, which is, you know, not newer, but it has Seinfeld's comedian show. That's my home. You know, all these streaming sites. Oh, they have your Sports Jeopardy. Yeah. That's yeah. probably why you're calling me. Um, so uh, that... We got a million views in five days. That's a record. Uh, who's your love interest in uh, Joe Dirt 2? Oh, well, let's, why don't we marinate in that fact for a few seconds before we move along. Okay. Uh, okay, so a million views. Let's not talk about it too much or over talk about it. All right. <laughs> now, who's my love interest? Brandy. I know you know the movie Back and Forth. Uh, Brandy's the same Brandy from the first Joe Dirt. Gorgeous Brittany Daniel. She is... Uh, Comes back, we get married, and then I get separated from the family. And uh, all right, that's enough. Fun. That's enough. That's enough. Dan, that's the first minute and a half. Do you date all your co-stars? Oh boy, we're jumping around. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> do, so <laughs> yeah. do you try to date all your co-stars? Yeah. Yes, I want to. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Well, yeah, every every movie has one. I mean, Samar gets really crazy beautiful girls on all his movies. You got Jessica Biel and uh, Kate Beckinsale. We have Paula Patton on this one. You might have worked with her last week. Uh, I did not see her and uh, Sean Astin, who of course was oh, yeah. uh, played uh, Rudy, and he's been in quite a few things. I I, I was just uh, Sandler and myself in the scene. Listen, you fill up that screen. You don't need anyone. Oh, I killed. I slayed. Uh, David Spade, I, comedian, thespian, joining us, Dan Patrick show. I saw a picture of you. You know what this buys us? A poster in that set. Doesn't it? Oh, the man cave, you mean? Or whatever your set is called. Yeah. Oh, don't do that. Don't don't well, play. I, is it a man cave? I don't know. Yes, you know it's a man cave. Don't be dismissive. <laughs> okay, I get it. I was dismissive about your million views <laughs> five days. There you go. And you had I no, even, you had no chance with Selma Hayek, by the way. No, no one does. Her, her husband's a billionaire. I'm like, I'm just trying to get to the M's. <laughs> Are you a thousandaire? <laughs> uh, I am now. Yeah, no. I go through it up my nose. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I'm like a per, I'm a first round draft pick with my money. It goes quick. <laughs> uh, I'm like you- I rented I rented a uh, gold plated. Bus to go to the movies. Everyone's like, "What well, do we need that?" I'm like, "Let's well, just do it. Get in. You're my posse." Have you seen the new Chris Farley documentary? Oh right. Uh, have I seen it? No. Do you, uh, am I in it? Yes. Do you plan on seeing it? That's a good question, Dan. You're digging deep. I do not think I will see it. I don't know. I just talked to Adam. Adam's in it too. Uh, we did it, and it's his family that did it, and it's, you know, there's these things come up about once a year, and you just say no, and you don't want to get into it again, but uh, uh, I have to talk about him a little bit in this book, and then when these guys came with this, I said, uh, yeah, it's his family, I'll do it, and I'll just, I don't know what to say, it's very awkward, but this is a positive one, it's not to say all the dark stuff, it's sort of about his comedy and all the fun stuff he did, so that. That made me think, okay, if we're just going to have fun with it. It's still sad at parts because it just is. But overall, it's it's interesting. I watched a clip, and Lauren was on it, and it's good to hear him talk and Mike Myers, and there's a lot of people in it talking. He uh, It's David Spade. He's in the reality prank show called Fameless on True TV, <laughs> Wednesday at 1030. Did I just bring this interview to a crashing halt? No, I don't care. Oh, the okay. The thing is it's good. It's good. I mean, that, that thing... Is an interesting. It'll be interesting, definitely, and it'll be fun. Mostly fun to watch because I saw a trailer of it, and he comes out doing cartwheels on Letterman. I remember when that happened. It was <laughs> brought back good memories. Like who has come out doing cartwheels? I was on with it once at the Super Bowl, and I think Brett Favre was there. So they made Brett Favre throw him passes, which is hysterical. 
and uh, he kept diving for them for no reason. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> but when when you did Tommy Boy with with Farley, yeah. uh, w- was it script? And then it was now let's try it in our own words and and, and, and you know yeah. lo- make it loose. So you start with yeah. one, and then they say, "All right, now have some fun with it." Yeah, we start with it, and and then they we get out there, and there's no one there because we're up in Toronto. So we just say, "Hey, the scene's a little flat. Maybe we try." Uh, is there a clip on tie? Why don't we do, hey, is this a clip on? Uh, uh, or does this make me look fat? I know your face does. Let's just try <laughs> throwing things in. And and then, you know, you don't know. And sometimes weirder jokes like housekeeping, the director, Pete, was very nice saying, it doesn't really make any sense, but let's do it. I don't care. Uh, I go, let's just throw it in for the joke factor. Housekeeping. But, yeah, because I did that every morning when I'd see Chris. I'd go to his room from my room one foot away and I go knock knock housekeeping <laughs> and he goes yeah and I go housekeeping he goes no and I go housekeeping he goes there's a thing on the door I'm like let me in in for people I just kept going and he goes god damn it I don't want it and then he goes oh it's you and I go it's me every single day dude <laughs> but when he was wearing his, the sport coat that was scripted uh, that was not, but that was another one we were just trying to spice up because he would be in my office, which was about 10 feet wide, and he had a desk on his side, <laughs> and I on my side. And he didn't write or read or do anything, so he'd just sit there and wait for everyone to write a great sketch for him. So I, I, had, to, I had to struggle on my legal pad. And then he goes, David, turn around. I go, dude, I'm actually busy. And he goes, Turn around. I go, if this is that guy in Little Toad again, it's not funny. It's played out. And he goes, no, I got a new thing. And then I turn around. He's got my Levi jacket on. That guy in Little Toad, don't you give up on it. <laughs> and he stuffed any Little Toad I had on in his fat arms all the time. So then in the movie, we were like, should we do Fat Guy in Little Toad? And then he started singing it. I go, someone will think this is funny. It's so dumb. Thank God you did that one, and your favorite team is the Yankees. Yeah, that was a bit I wrote for Weekend Update, and I kept going, oh, who is it, Spanky? Like, I did all those <laughs> sort of rubbing it out jokes, and I go, this is going to kill. I do it on Update, and it doesn't even get past read-through. I go, oh, my God, this needs to be somewhere. So in, in, uh, once I had more say in it, I'll tell me why no one's around, I go, Hey guys, I got a little rewrite. We're gonna we're gonna cram this in the scene. I go, this old stinker's gonna come to life. Yeah, uh, but it was a it was a better place for it. Good luck with uh, Joe Dirt Two Beautiful Loser on Crackle, also famous on True TV Wednesdays at ten thirty Eastern. David Spade, tell the Sandman I said hello, and of course, I'm glad, Paula. Patton. Glad you're in the movie, and uh, uh, we were happy to have you. I, I saw a picture of you, and you looked hilarious. So. Thanks for having me again. I'll call you guys soon. And give uh, Paula Patton another kiss for me. Love her. Okay, I will, buddy. Uh, Talk to you soon. All right, that's David Spade.